Why were you exiled from Iran? Um, at the time of the revolution, we were in Iran and uh, we realized after a little while that it wasn't safe for my father to stay there. Okay. In fact, his uh, name at one point was nailed to the mosque door, which was a prelude for being uh, taken by the revolutionaries. So I suspect you don't believe in revolutions being the way to change. Well, you know, the experience of my country certainly I think has shown that, that uh, a revolution, it's very exciting. Was it exciting for you too? Uh, yes, not in a good way. No, as in before, <laughs> I mean, as soon as the revolution happened, um, you were on the wrong side of it? Or initially, was it exciting? that? Well, I was nine years old, okay. so I wasn't really aware of sides or really what was going on, you know. Um, and I didn't ever feel that we were on the wrong side of any, anything. But obviously, since they were after my father, clearly they thought so. So we left and we went, moved with my family to the UK, to yes. London. We're going to speak about um, your travel writing. Do you consider yourself a travel writer or a journalist? Have you written for the, for the Times? for the Financial Express, for Harper's Bazaar, is that correct? That's right, for lots of publications. I write regularly also for The Guardian. Mm -hmm. uh, these are all UK papers for The Guardian, for The Times, for The Sunday Times, for The Financial Times in the UK and in China. Do you describe yourself as a travel writer or as a journalist? I describe myself as a writer, if I can get away with it, <laughs> and uh, as a journalist, because my jo in my journalism I write about several topics, and I've written um, all of my books have been guidebooks until, until now when I've published uh, The Cypress Tree, which is a, a memoir, a family memoir mm -hmm. about Iran. I see. Now, uh, tell me, uh, how is it that you're writing a Lonely Planet guide about Iran when you left when you were nine? Well, have because you done I a lot go of back. <laughs> a yes. lot of it? Yes, but in fact, the parts of the Lonely Planet guide that I wrote we're not the travel, page, we're not the gazetteer, mm -hmm. you know, the, the pages that tell you where to go and give you the guide, but they, um, there was a chapter on the arts mm -hmm. and there was a chapter on culture. Okay. And so those were the parts that I wrote. So they were more like essays, really. I see. Uh, now tell me about the revolution. What's your take being uh, in the midst of one? about the Iran revolution specifically and in general. You said revolutions may seem exciting, but they're not the best way to bring about change. Would you like to elaborate on that a little well, bit? Well, I think we've seen from the experience of Iran um, that when you overthrow a, a, perhaps a dictator or an uh, authoritarian regime or whatever it is, it's um, that there's often not very um, evolved alternatives because often, you know, under dictatorships or authoritarian regimes, oppositions and opposition parties are not allowed to exist. And so healthy debate and that kind of thing doesn't really develop. It doesn't exist. It doesn't become part of the culture. I don't think the only way to change it is sudden, so it gets a lot worse before it gets better. Because if there isn't an opposition, who will bring about the change if it doesn't happen in one sudden spurt? Well, that's a good point, you know, and that's that's a very good point and I suppose in Iran what we found was well the opposition had gone to the mosque because as as it's done so in uh, you know the countries of the Arab Spring. I believe Spring. it was this, this, this champagne drinking session of the Iran which revived a 79 year old Ayatollah who was they said they could he could never get powerful again but just this one action of his uh, is, is that how it happened? That, that, that's the story I've heard. Well, it, it's much more complicated than that. Sure. But if you, um, you know, my book, The Cypress Tree, is all, about, uh, is all about what happened because it's a memoir of my family. It's three generations of my family and that was my way to try and tell the, also the modern story of Iran. You know, how, because my question, of course, because I was nine years old when it happened, so I remember everything, but I didn't understand what was going on. Mm -hmm. So I, having then grown up in the UK, um, I really wanted to try and understand why the revolution had happened and sort of why it happened, what happened to us happened. You know, why were we exiled? Why did we have to run away? You know, my father, he wasn't a political figure. He was not involved so with the Shah. So why did he have to run away? Well, you know, my answer after many years of research and all of this soul searching is, I don't know. <laughs> and I think that's a little bit the fact, you know, sometimes there's no explanation for things. I suppose that, but this is, um, this was really what drew me into writing this book, was to examine the background, you know, how Iran had come to this point. And that, actually, I started in 79 with the revolution, but in order to try and understand the roots of the revolution, I had to go back more than 100 years.